Hello and welcome to another Beer Clipper video. This is part one of I don't know how many parts right now because I'm just standing here about to edit it uh, of the process I've gone through for making the farm and the surrounding fields for Rosie's Model Railway. Now regular viewers will know just how much I absolutely adore making things for Rosie. You can actually see it through the open door behind me, I think, yes, <laughs> um, in progress at the moment. Uh, and yeah, so I was gonna do this as one video and it's gone on longer and longer and it's taken more and more time. And frankly, I think that would probably be about four or five hours and ain't no one gonna watch that. People watch my hour long videos, but I think four hours might be a bit too much. So what I thought I'd do is just break it up into parts and this is gonna be part one. I will attempt to uh, split these relatively uh, sensibly, but um, again, it will just see how long it takes um, and where I manage to, uh, where I decide to stop will be pretty random, I think. So I hope that you enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments below. I always love to hear from you. Uh, I always reply to every comment I receive, positive or negative, uh, and uh, I do enjoy reading them. So please do say hello uh, and uh, yeah, enjoy the video and I'll see you again at the end of this to wrap up. I'm a little behind where I wanted to be on this, so I'm gonna to have to really crack on now. So the, what I need to do for um, the next stage of the railway is design and build as many of these buildings that are on it as I possibly can. So you can see the shape of the house. It actually goes, um, it's actually an L shape. It goes back from this bit. So um, that's how that works. And also you have this small shed here. Um, there's also, I think that shed there potentially we can see on here we have the house here and we have a shed here and we have another couple of barns and then we have the um i think that's probably the pig house um, but i'll make sure of that and then this is where the garden is so you can see roughly what the layout is and how they're related um, and you can see the old shape of the building uh, so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to sit down with a with this graph paper here i have some uh, what, 72 um, hoo scale miniatures here some figures um, and i'm just going to do this based on rough um Roughly, this is how, side, how big the, the door is. We know the size of a door, so we can work out how long that wall is. We can see how high it is. Just working on the proportions and see what it looks like. Now, one of the benefits of this build is it's not actually real world, is it? So if the house is a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger or whatever, as so long as it looks like this artwork, I'm happy. So I'm gonna sit down now, probably pop a video on. I'm not gonna film my sketching um, and I'll bring you back when I've done some drawing and then we'll work out how we're actually gonna build it. I am umming and ahhing about building it solid or building it actually made out of wood, <laughs> which would look awesome, but would, might take more time. So I'm not sure whether I might do a solid building for now and then I can always take that out and replace it as she gets older with a more detailed model though she won't care as she gets older because she won't care about Mrs. Boot, the farmer, with her two children, Poppy and Sam, and their dog called Rusty. <laughs> so I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna do some drawing. I'll bring you along when I come to the next step. So I've sat down, I've done some measuring, I've done some sketching, and I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. And I think I'm actually gonna start fabricating. Even if this one doesn't work, it'll give me a learning and a start for 10. So this is gonna be the floor pan that you can see here. Let me zoom in a little bit more just so that it's a little bit clearer. So this is the floor plan, um, and this goes along with this picture quite nicely. So you, this bit, this length here is that bit there, and then it dog legs out a little bit, and then returns back in this uh, in that in that shape. So that's how that looks at the moment. What I have then done is worked out some rough dimensions for heights. So this is the front of the main part of the house, as you can see, um, and is five centimeters there. So two and a half centimeters per floor, which is about right for a two centimeter high bod in an old building um, and goes up for an apex. So it's at eight centimeters total height. So the final floor is three centimeters. So it's a little bit more pointy um, just to give it a little bit more headroom and also to make it look nicer. So this is going to be the return wall and this is the front wall. I've got an idea of roughly the dimensions. I was thinking briefly about using actual cardboard. So this is the cardboard I was going to use, mainly because it's got the striations already, which I could potentially hack and fake around as if it was going to be wood. But I think the better material is going to be, and this is a very large sheet that I've got here, so a bit unwieldy, <laughs> is actually this thin XPS that I use quite a lot. It's uh, what, uh, five mil or maybe even less, three mil. 
um, and that I can score with a wire brush or I can carve into with a knife or with a pencil um, and that will allow me to both do something that's a little bit more structurally uh, stronger than cardboard I'll be able to pit, put pins through the bottom of this to join sections together um, which I do quite a lot um, and glue it using some strong construction glue um, and it should actually mean that I can um, cut, cut through it is going to be a bit thick but uh, I, I might even be able to do some small interiors is what I'm thinking if I get if it works well so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to and I'll zoom out now I'm going to use this humongous sheet that you can see here um, and I'm going to cut out the shapes that I need um, so that I have a flat pack of the building then I can roughly assemble it using pins then I can glue it in place and I can paint it and I'll be done as simple as that let's see how simple it actually turns out to be well, that was a fun evening. I really enjoyed that actually. It was hard and what I've made isn't this is definitely not the final thing but I'm very happy to have done it because I've got myself a really nice mock-up. I can look at the shape, I can see what it looks like um, and really start to plan now the real thing. So what I did was I used that foam and I made uh, a few measurements and I cut out some shapes. You can see that this is off center because I made this end the wrong size. So I just trimmed it down. I decided by that point I'm not going to keep this so it's fine. It gives me the floor plan. The floor plan looks really good. Um, the miniatures would it would be big enough it's a small farmhouse but they would be big enough for a prototype um, and it just gives me the idea of, of how it's going to look so I'll be able to set this down on the layout now and really start to plan out how that farmyard is going to look and then maybe even start doing some of the scenery while I'm building this because that's obviously going to be this is going to take a little while so being able to do the scenery and the and the and the contours at the same time as this going on is going to be a real win so yeah I used the hot glue gun very quickly to glue it together which worked really really well I'm slowly coming around to using hot glue guns um, I'm getting more controlled and, and more accurate with it but the bottom line is that's going to look wicked I think uh, I do have an interesting shaped end gable here which is going to be fun to make I think what I'm going to end up doing is using this cardboard which is nice and strong it's very rigid it's a, it is actually corrugated so it's actually quite quite strong it doesn't bend very easily it's quite hard wearing um, and if I'm not happy with the finish then I can actually go ahead and put some wood uh, coffee stirrers on it to do the wood effect but it might even end up being okay so I might go with the cardboard in the end after all. Anyway, there we are. Progress has been made, very, very happy. I can now go and put this down on the layout and see what it looks like. Um, and yeah, um, maybe next time I come to this, I'll actually start to fabricate the real thing, which is really cool and very exciting. It's gonna be, it's gonna be perfect, that really is good. I've been thinking about this for quite a long time and I've done a test, which I don't often do, as regular watchers will know, of how this might actually end up working. So what, I built this little uh, kind of mock-up here, which is going to be really good. And it's proven to me that basically, yes, I've got just about enough space on the actual layout because I've been able to place that in there. But also, this is not a material I want to use. I'm just not very happy with it. So my second attempt, my second way of doing it is going to be using um, coffee stirrers. And here is my practice run. So what I've done is I've got some thick masking tape and I've got more over here. When we're, I'll show you how I go about doing it in a second taped it down onto the bed bench actually not onto the board and then stuck um, pressed down some coffee stirrers in they are this is going to be the side wall they are the correct there is enough distance there to do the side wall and there is enough height as well and then I covered that with PVA glue and then stuck my uprights on to hold it together and if you've watched my build video where I made the um, seafront fortification you'll recognize some of these construction techniques from there but this is going to be taking it a bit further because I'm going to do the whole building in it so that is the state that I'm going to get to and I'm going to make pretty much all the shapes that I need up front that's what I'm going to do now so I'm going to sit down here with this board and I've got the board so I can move it around because once I did this I then had this taped to the, uh, to the table with weights on it and I couldn't move it. But if I have the board then I can move it around a bit better after I've worked with it and clear the space for more, for more hobbying. Uh, so I'll show you how I'm going to do this with the first one. And then um, I'll probably pop some music on or something here and turn the camera off and just crack on because I need to get this done. So my idea is that I'm going to actually make... A, um, make the ends, so the gable ends while you're watching. 
that is these. So they don't need to be very wide, but they do need to be tall. So what we'll do is we will tear off a couple of lengths of this and secure it down just by folding it over. That's all you need to do. And obviously then it will join together in the middle. And we'll do this until we can see that we have enough. So I'm actually going to put one more because I want to have some overlap. There we are. So now we've got enough. So what I will now do, and this is relatively wasteful, but don't worry, I will be able to reuse most of these sticks, is I just go along and literally, and let me move the camera just for a second. There we go, you can see a bit better from that angle. So I literally just place them in like this. Now, one of the reasons why I'm doing it like this is the chop it that I've got makes a lot of noise and I'm also just want to get it done. I don't want to disturb Rosie who's asleep downstairs. So what we'll do is we'll stick loads and loads of these onto this sticky back. So let's get that done. There we are. We have enough now, probably, to do two gable ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself a pencil, which I forgot to grab, and then I'll show you the next step. Now I've got a pencil, I'm going to roughly draw around this shape. And I'm not really worrying too much about it being completely accurate because this is not how I'm going to actually cut the shape out when I get to that stage. This is merely so that I can position my uprights correctly to give support. And as you can see, I do have sufficient to do two walls, which is really, really cool. So draw your shape around it. I say it doesn't have to be completely accurate because this is the reason for the next, for this step, is we're gonna paint on our PVA, like so. PVA, yes, it is PVA. I often say paint on our paint when I mean PVA. So we paint on the PVA. This will get in the cracks and will help to join the actual um, strips together, as well as the next application, which is going to be matchsticks. There we are. So we have a goodly application of PVA over the whole of the area that you want to keep. Again, this is not the only thing that's going to hold it together, so do not worry. I then have a pack of matchsticks. Now these are hobby matchsticks, which don't have any of the sulfur or whatever it is on them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here and I'm going to add them on in such a way that they will provide support when I cut it out. So just in board of where my marks are, and trying to think about where the um, so, so I didn't focus where the where that kind of window is going to be, in case I do decide that I want to cut the windows out, which I may not. So for this, I'm going to need four. You can see that works quite nicely, joins them together quite well. Okay, so we've positioned our supports are struts that are going to be on the inside of the building and that's going to make sure that when I cut these out there's actually something supporting and joining everything together so like I say I will be doing some more and what I then come along and do is pop some weight on like that and I will leave that now to dry overnight for a very long time so it's definitely dry to come to the next step so what I'm going to do now is pop some music on like I say and I'm going to start making the rest of the panel so I've done this wall and these two end walls. I need to do this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall. So I haven't got that much to do yet. So I'll get that done uh, in exactly the same way. And I will bring you back when I have something more to show you. Uh, whenever that is, I will show you the next step when I get to it. But I can tell you what, I'm really, really pleased to actually make some progress because I've been staring at this all week. It's now Thursday. Um, I did expect to do more on the railway this week but you know we've got to wait for inspiration and i finally think i've worked out a way of doing it so yeah a little bit a little bit slow to start but we are getting there this i think will work and if it doesn't well at least i've tried these have now all dried 
<clears throat> I left them quite a few days actually. It's been it's uh, Sunday now as I come to this. Um, you can see that there's some little bit of issue here on this one particularly that's lifting. It's not quite dried right, but with the um, matchsticks glued across that should be okay. So what I now need to do is get the some exact and when I say exact I mean very exact templates so that I can then cut these out and start to work with them. So I'm going to make use of my squared paper uh, which is going to help me to be a little bit more accurate and I'm just going to sit here with a pencil and with um, and just draw out until I'm very happy and then I'll cut them out using a knife, using a craft knife and a metal ruler to make sure that I get absolutely straight right down the line, not scissors. And then what I'll be able to do is drop those templates on here, glue them on and then cut around them. So it is a little bit of an involved process, there might be a quicker way of doing it if you have one Pop it in the comments below, any ideas that I've not thought of. I would be very, very happy to hear from you if you do have some ideas. But otherwise, I'm just going to crack on with how I'm doing it. <laughs> because all I've got is in my own head. So yes, yeah, so I'd be very interested to hear any alternative ideas. So I'm going to sit down now, just going to make a cup of tea and measure out and cut them out and stick them on just using PVA um, and leave them overnight again. And then I can come in with the Dremel and cut around them and then I can start to assemble the actual building. And then we are here with the shapes that I need. So what I've got now is one of my many, many safety rulers. <laughs> and I've got my sharp knife and I'm gonna hopefully do this correct first time though most of the effort of that was actually working out what the exact dimension should be so I've done all this one all down the right side well all down the correct side on the left hand side of the paper so I can do one cut and then remove that and that'll make that a lot easier. And you can see using a knife and a straight edge is very, very accurate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut all those out. I'm not going to film it all. I just thought I'd show you the, in the beginning. I'm going to cut those out and then I will glue them onto the bits of the, um, onto, onto the back of the masking tape with PVA. Weight it all down and leave it until it's dry. And then I'll bring you back when I come with the Dremel. As you can see, the template has glued to the masking tape. And now what we're going to do is we've got the Dremel and I've got a cutting blade. Um, this is not a wood cutting blade. I don't have one of those, so it's not ideal. It's actually for cutting metal, but it does go through this thin wood. You wouldn't really want to be cutting too much deep wood. Um, I will not film most of this and I'll probably put some music over it because it makes a nasty sound. But you want to be very, very careful while you're doing this because, yeah, you don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want things to uh, fly up and hit you in the eyes to get some eye protection on. But what we're going to do is we're going to basically very carefully cut along the edge of the temple. And there we are. So that's been cut. And you can see that's a nice straight edge. It'd be really nice if I had one of those mini... Um, Circular, circular saws like table saw things wouldn't it that'd be really cool but I don't have one so I have to do this so I have that to cut I have that to cut I have those to cut I have those to cut and I have that to cut so it's going to take me a little while so I will get that done and uh, bring you back when I come to the next step which will probably be gluing it together it's taken quite a few days for me to get these finished mainly because I couldn't find my uh, protective glasses and I was cutting away and realized you know what I'm using the incorrect tool this is a metal grinder, not a wood cutter, and I haven't protected my eyes. And so I stopped until I found these. Well, I didn't, Angela found them. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so I've just finished. It was quite easy. I've got one problem, which is I've lost the tip of this one. And I've got another problem, which is this one should actually have the tip cut off it, but I lost the tip of it anyway. So that's gonna work fine. Um, and what I'm gonna do now is uh, just, um, decide whether I'm going to glue them together or whether I'm going to do the insides and let me explain. So I want to do a detailed inside a bit, not much but a bit because I might cut out some windows but I'm not sure but also it will it will just make it more solid. So what I'm thinking of doing is getting some wood, uh, some wood filler and skimming inside between the uh, supports um, with wood filler and I'm trying to work out whether I'm going to do that before I do any gluing or after I glue. The reason to do it after is because then I won't have to scrape any off if I get it over a contact point. The reason to do it before is 
you get better access. So I'm thinking I might do a mix. So I might do all between all of these um, kind of like the uprights because I know I'm not gonna have any glue points there. And that will give it that um, rigidity and security. Glue it together and then come in and just reinforce the corners with the um, wood filler. I've still got the uh, paper on all but this one. I peeled the back off, I peeled it off that one because just to check that it worked and it does. So I will also need to come along and remove the graph paper from the back of all the other pieces um, and then I'll be able to uh, probably do the wood filler next. But I'm going to think about it for a bit and I'll come back to that probably this evening or tomorrow. So decision made, I'm going to make use of my poly filler and I'm going to fill in the gaps between each of these uh, uprights just with the poly filler. And I'm just going to come in and at the moment I'm going to use this but I may change this little sculpting tool, I may change to something that's a little bit kind of bigger. <laughs> but I'm just going to come along and I'm not going to worry too much about making it flat because I will sand it down afterwards. But what this will do is give the whole, all the walls a lot of su support and also just finish it off nicely if I do decide to drill through um, and have uh, doors and windows open and decorate the inside it means that I've got a good base on which to do that so I will do that on all of these leave it to dry and then sand it down and uh, yeah I'm not sure if this is going to be the right tool it's the one that immediately came to mind I might just get myself a larger a bit of um, tongue depressor or something like that um, which will allow me to get a smoother finish uh, but like I said I'm going to sand it anyway so there we are let's do that on all of these and when it's done and I come to the next step I will uh, be sure to turn the camera on we have two processes to go through on these sections of wall for the house um, this one is actually a little bit warped, which is a bit of a concern. Um, I may need to flatten that down. I hadn't noticed that until I just picked it up, but I should be able to resolve that because um, just a bit of glue and a clamp and that should be okay. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and I'm going to sand it down. Like I said, this one's going to need to have a little bit of remedial work done on it because it's a bit warped. But I can still show you the step that I'm going to do, uh, which involves a straight edge and a sharp sculpting tool like this. Um, if you don't have one of these, then you could use a, a hobby knife, but just be careful that you don't cut through by accident. Because what we're going to be doing, and what I'll actually do is just quickly move the camera angle a little bit so that you can see a bit better for this bit. Now, so what we've got is we've got our sculpting tool and we've got our... Uh, our straight edge um, metal ruler and I'm going to come along and I'm going to score in planks and I'm going to split each of the uh, actual um, coffee, coffee stirrers into three okay so we're going to draw two straight lines down each coffee stirrer so first of all I mark each end just so I know where to line and then very carefully come along with the sharp end and score down it and just be careful that you don't cut through the hole of the coffee stirrer and split it. You just want to mark it in. And this will now give the impression of more planks than there are coffee stirrers. So it'll look really nice when we come to, a, when we come to paint it. So I'm gonna do that on all of these. I've already done one as a test. That's how that looks when it's all done, which I think is quite nice. So I'm gonna do all of that and I'll, I'll resolve this and I'll let you know how I've done it. What's happened here is uh, this section here wasn't quite glued to the strut and so it has warped when the wood glue or when the wood filler has gone on. So what I think I should be able to do is get myself a clamp like this and clamp it down and then get some glue and that should make it that should make it okay so I'll probably just do something like that but I'll let you know what I do to resolve it at the end of the day if I need to I will have to make this section again which is a bit frustrating but this is for Rosie and I would rather that it was done absolutely right than I cut corners so if I have to wait a little bit I have to wait a little bit to do it right sorry that's a bit annoying so yeah but I'll do the rest of these sand them down and mark off the edge of the uh, uh, the all the planks and then I will um, bring you back for the next step when I get to it. That sound you just heard was me coming to a screeching halt. I've even got to the point of putting the glue down in where the pond is going to go and I've realised, hang on a second, I've got a space cut now. I've got a fair amount more to do in terms of the modelling compound on the rest of it so why not prime it and paint up at least the wood <coughs> and the water and the ducts 
while I can get, so I can get better access to it now, and then come in and, and, and adhere it in and glue it down, um, and then finish up the modeling compound later. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna prime this and paint this, and then I'll come and glue it in later. So I have put a layer of PVA in, but that's fine. It'll just, um, it'll just dry, and uh, I can always put things on top of that. <coughs> so yeah, uh, a <laughs> rapid, rapid change of plans. After a week off, basically because I was feeling so rough, I didn't want to make a mistake, I finally am now gonna start to glue together the walls of Rosie's, of the house or the farm, of Apple Tree Farm. So what I've got is I've got this little magnetic tray which my parents bought me once, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and I'm going to be using super glue initially to make the initial bonds because it needs to have a, quite a quick effect and then when it's done and I'm happy with how secure it is then what I'll do is I'll come along and I'll either put PVA and I'll probably also put some more filler as I've suggested I might. So what you can see is I have with this magnetic thing I'm able to position the walls and get my hand out of the way which is really really important when you're doing something like this because it's actually quite fiddly to do this without magnets. So what we'll do is we'll place all of our walls and when we're happy with them then I'll come along run a bead of the super glue down now you can see that this one actually is slightly off but it's okay the problem with scratch building is it things can be slightly off um, you're not going to be as accurate as a, as a machine not unless you are a machine and I very much am not so yeah so we'll get this roughly mocked up um, with the magnets holding it in place making sure everything lines up um, and then I'll, then I'll glue it and then I'll put the um, the end on um, when when this is all done and dried um, so obviously I've got a this isn't this isn't everything there's, there's three more walls to glue on but I can at least get this shape done and you can see that that is going to look pretty good so let's get a magnet inside these all square and then it'll be a case of coming in with the super glue running a bead down and uh, then letting it dry for half an hour or so we'll do something else there we are we have roughly a building there we are that looks good Right, I'm going to glue that. I'm probably going to stop the camera because there might be swearing um, if it falls apart, which it might do. It's very delicate. Um, and then when it's done and I've got something to show you next, I'll, I'll be back and I'll show you what it looks like. But yeah, we are able to now assemble our house. I have been working on this in the background and finally I'm ready to do a little bit more filming. So I've managed to assemble the house and I'm actually pretty pleased with it. It's not great, um, but it's certainly going to look very nice and I'm very, very, very pleased that I scratch built it. Um, <clears throat> I've primed it with a spray primer, just some like cheap auto grey primer just to seal the wood a little bit more. And what I'm now going to do is come along and I'm going to paint it white, just with a normal clean white house paint. And that was terrible, didn't really focus, but you know what I mean. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, I probably will do three or four coats. I want it to be a really nice shiny white, and then it'll be ready to be uh, put in place, and I'll be able to start to work on the roof as well, which I think is gonna be relatively easy. I think I can probably print something out even to use for the roof, that's my idea anyway. So let's get some white on it, and, uh, and see how this looks. It's, as I said, it's just, standard house paint so there's nothing special here um, I have doors and windows coming that have been uh, cut for me by Tyler um, and when they arrive I'll do a video on them um, he's uh, starting a new business and I'm happy to support him and help him out with that um, I hasten to add that I, I bought them um, I don't often take free things from anyone I don't believe in that very much unless someone is insistent um, so yeah, the, um, they will be coming and will be stuck in, uh, stuck on this when they arrive, which is why I've not scratch built them. So you can see that that is going to work very, very nicely. It's going to be a nice clean white and it'll look very good. So I'll get the rest of that done now off camera um, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's, when it's been finished and whether there are more uh, than one coat that's going to go on. This is the first shot using my new wireless microphone. So hopefully 
yeah, hopefully it's going to come out okay. I've just done a few tests. It does seem to be sounding right, but anyway, we'll move on. I'm not going to focus on that. I'll do a proper review video of it when I come to it. So it is Rosie's birthday today. I have dramatically failed in getting anything remotely resembling a model railway done in time, um, but that is life. What I have though is I have the, the farmhouse. The uh, fittings, so the doors and what have you and the windows haven't arrived yet. Hopefully they'll be here soon um, and I'll add them on and paint them up when they do. <clears throat> And, uh, but it's working nicely, it has worked very nicely, I'm quite pleased with it. So a couple of things that I need to do now, one of them is I need to put a, a piece across the top here to act as a ridge and a piece across here to act as a ridge so that I can put the roof on. The second thing that I want to do, um, and I'm going to use balsa wood for this, I'm going to try a different technique because it's always good fun to try different things, is to make the little uh, barn here because I think that's the only two buildings I'm actually going to do on the layout because there's just not enough space for more than that. So balsa is really good but also really scary to use in one sense because it's so soft that it's really easy to make a mistake and screw up. So I'm going to measure up and mark up, make myself a template, I'll draw on this uh, where I want to cut then I'll very carefully cut it. So what I, once I've got uh, everything that I need uh, to make this shape done then I will come back and show you how I go about cutting it and we'll glue it together. Uh, it should be quite quick. Uh, there's different colours on different pictures of this barn so I'm not sure what colour I'm going to go with uh, but the first off what I need to do is actually make the thing. What I do know is I'm going to do it open. I'm going to have it open so you can see inside it so these doors will have to be cut out as well. So that's one thing which will add to the complexity. So I'll get that started and I'll bring you along when I'm about to start cutting. I've done some measuring and I've made some decisions. So what we've got here is we've got this four and a half centimeters, 45 millimeters, which is the same width as the front of the house, basically, because it's roughly the same when I'm looking at the drawing. However, the height of the walls is lower. So that is a 20 millimeter high wall. And then basically to save material, I'm not sure if it's right. It looks about right to me. What I've done is I've mirrored that across here. So the height of this is basically um, the ha half the width of one of these sheets. And then I've done two walls, and my remembrance of this is it's quite shallow, so I think that's going to be fine. That was 30 millimetres. So what I'm now going to do is very, very carefully, I'm going to start to cut this out. So I have my safety ruler, and I'm going to use the hobby knife for this, because it's a bit thinner, and I think that it will give me a good result with, uh, with this. So what I'll do is I will just very, very carefully come along and start to cut. Sorry for the noise there. So what you do when you're cutting um, balsa is you need to do, especially when you're going across the grain, you need to do multiple gentle passes. Don't try and go for all at once. Don't rush it, otherwise you will crumble it and then it'll all fall apart and you won't get a clean cut. And you'll probably just get bits. So multiple shallow gentle passes. Like that. So I'll get the rest of that done and I will bring you along when I've finished to show you me gluing it together. Here we are, that's cut out very very nicely and carefully. So what we have is we have the front and I also did cut out the um, the doorway which I've done two centimetres wide and just up to the same level as the eaves. And I've got the two return walls here, that's my waist, and the back wall with no with no, um, no doorway on it, obviously. So I'm going to use super glue here. It's going to uh, dry very quickly and it's going to make this a simple construction. But before I do that, you're shouting at the camera, go, at, the, at the screen going, don't forget, don't forget. What I need to do is very lightly come along and score in the plank lines. So I can do that just with the side of my craft knife. And that will then give me the lines for when I paint it so it will look like it's made of planks. So I will actually do that and then come back when it's done and show you the gluing. <laughs> Good thing I remembered that otherwise that would have been quite frustrating because after you've glued this together it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do this because you're likely to make the whole thing fall apart particularly if you're as clumsy as I am. So you can see it doesn't take very long. I'll quickly get this done across all of the boards uh, all, of, all of the walls, and then I'll bring you back for the gluing. Well, there we are, that really did not take very long, in a minute or so. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these together. So I'll do that with super glue, as I've said. So we'll run a bead of super glue down one of the edges. There it is. And then carefully sit that in 
Ah, dropped it on the floor. That is a clumsy. That is a clumsy. Start that again. Cut, cut, cut. Now that didn't take very long at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some super glue. We'll run a super glue down the bead, a bead of super glue down the edge, and then very carefully set that on top of the bun, and that's it. This is one of the benefits of super glue. I'm not a huge fan normally of using it, but with balsa wood, it really does work well because it just bonds almost immediately. So let's do the other wall. And this will pretty much be ready for painting. Now I might seal it a bit. I might put some PVA on it. I'm not sure. My concern is I don't want it to warp. Um, uh, obviously, I don't want it to warp. Uh, the, the biggest curse of modelers everywhere is warping. Um, so I will probably think about it for a minute or two before I start the next step. But that is the barn assembled. So that's a far quicker process than for the house. Though the house I am very pleased with, obviously. It looks great. But that barn has been very quick to put together. Because all we need to do now is drop that on. Make sure it marries up straight. Which it doesn't at the moment. And there we are. We have ourselves a little barn. Isn't that lovely? Right, I'll let that dry and then I'll decide what I'm going to do for painting and I also need to think about the roofs. A decision has been made on how I'm going to treat this and I'm going to make use of my wood stain and I'm going to use the dark wood stain I've got which is Afrikansky teak. African teak. So just going to apply this using a normal brush in this way and what it will do is it will both preserve and stain the wood. So just using an old brush as you can see, one that I don't mind getting knackered. It's one that I use a lot for this type of application. And I'm going to be very careful because it's quite delicate obviously because it's, um, it's not made of coffee stirrer so it could break quite easily. I won't film the whole of this process, but I'm going to get this stained and then we can actually basically build the farmyard because the house is there apart from the roof and I can stick the roof on after. And this is here now apart from the roof and I can stick the roof on after. And downstairs I have been painting up the pond. So once this is set and done, I will start to put together the farmyard and I'll bring you along for that. So I'll get this done and I'll see you in a bit. All right, here we are at the model railway. You can see that the uh, barn has been stained and the house is in position. And I've got these in the locations where I want them to be. Uh, I did bring out my glue thinking that what I was going to do was I was going to actually stick these down and, um, and have them in place and then do the modeling compound around. But I've just had the thought that what I probably should do really is draw around them and attempt to avoid putting modeling compound where I want them to be um, and then come in and put them, glue them in later and then very carefully fill in around the edges. And the main reason for doing that is so that I don't get modeling compound on these buildings, which I don't want to do. And also it'll make it easier for me to get in with the detailing with the static grass applicator when I don't have these tall buildings in the way. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna mark out around it with a pencil I'm going to attempt this evening to get a bit more modelling compounding done. You can just see up at the front here, this is the cliff where the railway runs just in front of it. Um, and if I can get the whole of the farmyard done, which is this, um, and maybe even a bit of the road compounded as well, then I can start to work on this area, get it painted, try and get some flocking down and some static grass and have something to show Rosie, which would be really, really amazing for me to do. So I'm going to try basically and get the, uh, get the farmyard done. Not the fields at the back, not the fields over here, but just the farmyard, which kind of runs like this to the edge where the road is, which is here. So yeah, that's the state of the uh, modern railway right now. I thought I quickly, uh, I talked myself out of gluing it down. So I'm gonna get this done and uh, yeah, I'll bring you along and show you what it looks like when I get to the next stage. Rosie's railway has taken a little bit of a back seat this uh, week with everything else that's been going on. However, I have still been considering it and I think that I'm gonna just do a little bit more now just to get it back on, on track and maybe I can carry on next week doing uh, Rosie's Railroad as well as the other stuff that's non-hobby related. So what I'm going to work on is finishing off the buildings for the farm. I've just purchased and downloaded and printed the red roof tiles from Railway Scenics which is what I'm going to use for the roof. 
I will probably glue that to some card, but I'll probably do that not now um, because I'm a bit better and I want to actually go to bed. <clears throat> um, but the, what I am going to do now is I'm going to put the ridge, ridges in for the roofs so that can dry overnight and then I can get to the actual stick in the roof on next. So, <coughs> excuse me, still got a cough. So what I've got here is a very thin bit of balsa um, and I'm going to grab myself a pencil. There we are, so I've got a pencil. Um, and I'm going to mark and cut and then glue this in place just using super glue for now. Um, and I'll glue it in place so that it is actually an apex. So I've got the measurement there, so I can very carefully cut this with a sharp knife. There we are. And then what I'll do is I'll put a dab of super glue at one end and at the other. And then set it in place. And like I say, I want to make sure that it is actually doing an apex thing. I've actually managed to cut that a little bit short. A bit frustrating. But I'll hold it in place and that'll be fine. So that's actually going to be with the ridge at the top, if you can see. So I will hold that to dry, to set which hopefully won't take too long. Super glue is normally very quick with wood. And then what I'll do is I'll do the same technique on the side bit of this house and also along the top of the barn and then I'll leave them to dry and go to bed. <laughs> so yeah, there we are. A little bit of progress on Rosie's Railway. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mount the tiles to this cardboard using 3M craft mount which works quite well but it is a bit sticky a bit stinky even and it's a bit annoying when the top pops off so what we're going to do is we're going to spray evenly over the surface and with that done we'll press this down very carefully on top Nice and flat, and there we are. So now what I can do is I will be able to cut that out. I'll let that, I'll let that go off for an hour or two anyway. I don't think you need to, but I will, because I'm about to start work. Um, so I'll let that go off for an hour or two, and then I'll be able to cut that out and get to the right dimensions for the roof and have something that's solid enough for what I need. As you can see, I've uh, put the roof on the barn, and it looks great. I'm really, really pleased with that. I'm probably going to come along and uh, put a bit of a sideboard on there. Um, if I look at the pictures, it's actually a little bit of a white trim that goes around the edge. So I did that as a test piece to work out if it, would, if it would actually work, and it did. So let me show you what I've done. So first of all, I'm going to do this bit of the uh, building, this roof, and then I'll do the bigger roof. So the first thing to do is to work out roughly how, what the size you need. <clears throat> so if I take my ruler, I can see that for a very small overhang, I'm going to want to cut that to be 65 millimetres. Um, I can then have a look at the actual dimensions going across, and it's 35 millimetres to the centre, so that's going to want to be 70 millimetres. Now, as it happens, that dimension is the same dimension as I've got here. However, unfortunately, it's actually for the other way around, so I can't just follow that because of the way that the, the direction of these tiles is that way. So <clears throat> what we need is we need to go 65 millimetres across. So I will get my pencil here and mark that. And then, oh no, I was, it is, it's 70 centimetres down. I'm okay, I can go 70 centimetres down. 70 millimetres, 70 centimetres, that'll be a very big roof. So if, what I'll do actually is I'll go along because I can follow the line on the, um, on the printout to keep straight, which is really nice kind of thing. Draw the little kind of 90 degree mark and just make sure, yep, that's 70. So. Now I'm going to take my safety ruler and my sharp blade <clears throat> and I'm going to cut it out. And I do this with the knife because you can actually be much more accurate with a knife than you can with scissors, as long as you're careful. But do be careful, make sure you have yourself a safety ruler. Uh, 
There we are. So we've cut out our roof now. So the next thing to do is to score the roof so that it will bend. So we actually want to score it on both sides. So what I'll do is I'll get my ruler again and I will find the center point, which because this is 70 mil is going to be at 35. So we can put a mark there and we can put a mark on the other side. And this time we're going to go, we're going to score it very, very lightly. Make sure you don't cut right the way through. So otherwise it'll be more difficult for you to glue down. It's just a very light score, just to help with the folding process. There we are. And what we'll do is we'll do the same on the other side because that's where the card is and it'll be much harder for us to fold this if we don't and we might end up damaging it. So, there we are. Now that we've scored that, you can see that that folds quite nicely. It does leave us a little white mark, which we're going to deal with later. And then when we put that on, you can see that that sits and fits really nicely. So what I'm actually going to do, this one I did with PVA. Now that worked okay because it was quite small and I was actually able to kind of lean it up against something like this with a weight on it and that's held it down. But for this, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge for me to glue down, I think. What I might be able to do is come in with a weight like that and put another weight on the side and that might be able to hold it. Um, I will give that a go and when I've got it glued I will show you what I've done rather than kind of like juggle around on the camera which will be a bit annoying to watch. Um, but the next stage is basically to glue that down. Um, so apply glue along each of the edges here and up on the ridge down and along the bottom and if you wish apply a little bit of glue along the edge which is going to go into the building as well just to make it really secure and then I will leave that overnight when it's done. So I'll bring you back in a minute when I've actually got it glued down and tell you what I did. So I have done that. I've used PVA. Um, I ran it where I suggested, including up against the edge, and then I'm weighting it down with these two. Um, <laughs> this is about all the exercise my barbells get nowadays um, is being used to, to hold things in place. And hopefully that will now dry nicely. So I'll leave that overnight and we'll check it again. And if it has dried, then I'll do exactly the same thing for the top. Um, and then this will be ready apart from the doors and windows, which I'm waiting on being delivered. So yeah, really, really pleased to have actually got some more time on this. And uh, um, yeah, and slowly but surely we're getting there. So here we are, the roofs are on. And I think they're looking really, really nice. But of course, they're sat in a white field of deadness. And that it brings me to my aim for this upcoming week is to get the farmyard done and at least the, uh, tr the uh, track and the modeling compound for the rest of this upper area because it's been a shame. I missed the deadline of her birthday. That kind of deflated me a bit, made me feel a little bit rubbish because I really wanted this to be a lot further along. Um, but hey, that's how life is. Um, and now I've compounded that by kind of feeling bad and not doing anything to it. So let's see whether I can manage to crack on with this in the coming week and get a little bit more done. Um, we shall see. Uh, but for now, the buildings have their roofs on and uh, we can start to really dress around them. So there we are, about 40 odd minutes, and uh, I think that's quite a good place to end. I was feeling quite deflated at that point, but now, as I stand here recording this, I'm cracking on again, and it's, uh, it's really cool to see, and Rosie loves it. She looks at it very often. Uh, she knows where Poppy and Sam live. I can tell you that much. So yeah, I will continue this series with another video. I will link to it at the end and in the description below when it's up. Um, and also, of course, this is not the first video in this series, so please watch the rest of them if you're interested, They're, they are all in a playlist. So thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. It's awesome that people take an interest in the stuff I'm doing and maybe I inspire and encourage you to give this a go yourself and that would be awesome for me. That would, be, that would satisfy me very much if I do. So let me know in the comments below if that's the case. And I'll wrap up by saying, as always, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.